Hi, welcome to Avocet Math. In this video and in a few examples from recent AMC exams, we'll look at applying basic modular arithmetic methods. So let's take a look at our example problem. An integer n is selected at random in the range of 1 to 2020. What is the probability that the remainder when n to the 16th power is divided by 5 is 1? Now before we dive into this one, let's do a very brief intro to modular arithmetic. You'll find more details in the description section. Now, the basic idea of modular arithmetic is to take the integer number line and wrap these numbers around a circle with positive numbers in the clockwise direction and negative going numbers in the counterclockwise direction. The size of the circle is given by the modulus, 5 in this example. Now, this is the same as taking all the integers and mapping them into the range of 0 to 4 according to their remainder upon division by 5. Any two numbers with the same remainder are said to be congruent in that modulus. Now from the circle, we can easily pick off a few example equivalencies or congruences in the language of modular arithmetic. So for example, we say that minus 4 is congruent to 1 is congruent to 6 in modulus 5. Second example, we say that minus 3 is congruent to 2 is congruent to 7 in modulus 5. Now we can do something interesting by adding these two equations together to find minus 7 congruent to 3 congruent to 13, again in modulus 5. And interestingly, this is a valid congruence. This is a true statement. Similarly, we can multiply these two equations to arrive at 12 congruent to 2 congruent to 42, again in modulus 5. And this also is a valid true congruence. So from this simple example, we see that the rules for algebra concerning addition, subtraction, and multiplication are the same rules of algebra you're already familiar with. Now it turns out that the algebra rules in modular arithmetic for division are a little more complicated, but not much so. And this is about all you need to solve most AMC problems more efficiently. That and a concept called the Chinese remainder theorem is about all you need in your toolkit. So I encourage you to take the time to learn these concepts. Okay, so let's see how we can use some of these ideas to help solve our example problem. Now in our problem, we're dealing with remainders upon division by 5. So it seems like analyzing this problem in mod 5 is the way to go. Because in mod 5, there really are only 5 different types of numbers. In mod 5, the 5 possible numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 0. And these 5 numbers are evenly distributed over the range of 1 to 2020. Now we also know that taking the power of n to the 16th is a bit like taking repeated squares, going from n to n squared, n to the 4th, n to the 8th, and finally n to the 16th. So it seems like we just need to track these five numbers through this repeated squaring operation. So let's see how that works. For n equals 1, n squared is equal to 1, and all repeated squares will also leave us with 1. For n equals 2, n squared is equal to 4, n to the 4th is equal to 16, but we know that 16 is really just 1 in mod 5. And if we take repeated square operations after that, we're left again with just 1. For n equal 3, n squared is equal to 9. Squaring 9, we get 81. But here again, 81 is just equal to 1 in mod 5. And further squaring operations will just leave us with 1. 4 squared is 16. But here again, we know 16 is just 1 in mod 5. And all the repeated squaring operations will again leave us with just 1. So it seems like the only case that will leave us with something other than 1 is 0, because n squared 
and all squares after that will again leave us with zero. So of the five equiprobable cases, only four of the cases will give us one for a probability of four-fifths for choice D. So there you go, an efficient solution using modular arithmetic. Please check out the description section for more details and examples, and we'll see you at the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.